Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, buddy! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. So Marty doesn't remember where we were. No, nope, uh, We're on Turnabout Succession, Day 2, Trial, oh, trial former. former. So we're at the trial now. Because the investigation oh, period was kind of short. Oh, for a second I was like, I thought we already got that guy put in jail? Which guy? <laughs> the, uh, Sharknado. Yes, we did get I him like, put in jail. I was like, wait, why are we back in time? Never mind. No. Now I remember what we're doing. about succession. This is the girl who won't talk. Yes. October 8th, 948 oh, AM, District one Court. one request. Defendant lobby number six, what? If there's a bailiff, I get to voice them this time. Is that Okay. <laughs> Um, we'll see. Aww! <laughs> but I've never gotten to voice a bailiff. Like, every time... I think you have. Like, every no, time you I'm have. just like, the bailiff, I'm back. <laughs> She's the detective. <laughs> see? Good morning! So, you're... Vera, right? I'm Chirsey. Chirsey Wright. That's right with a W. Uh, but not right, right? Um, we're on your side. You can tell us anything, please. Good morning. She, she speaks! Hmm, not bad, not bad. But I think you'd do better with a little smile, you know? You're so pretty, you need to sell yourself, you know? Um, no, you don't have to sell yourself with your looks. Nope. That's not a thing that you need to do, no, no, no. You know? Trucy, let's take it easy for starters. Furiously drawing. Thank you for taking my case. Okay! Well, that's a start, I guess. There she goes with the nail polish again. That's great, really. It's so cultured. Want to try? Ooh, really? <sighs> Girls. And then the trial was, just starts. Was she saying, try, do you want to try, like, the nail polish? Do or do you want to try? try drawing in her sketchbook? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. Nail polish, I think probably. it was nail polish. The victim, Drew Misham, was a forger. And a stolen painting was found in his studio. A life of crime, really. And maybe one that led to his death. Oh, yeah. By the way, in case people didn't know, Marty's prediction is either Phoenix Wright is going no, to be the okay, prosecutor. No, I was kind of kidding. Or Christoph Gavin is going to Christoph be the prosecutor. I think Christoph Gavin is going to be the prosecutor. I know he's in jail after killing a guy and he was like, that's a defense attorney. But it's, no. He's the perfect person for a trial to be better. I don't know. I, I just, I hope, uh, I have my hopes, but I, I don't think it's going to be that. October 8th, 10 a.m., District Court, Courtroom Number 3. Oh, come on, I don't want Clavier! We Why? Have, every single time that we've had a previous case, it's been a different prosecutor, it's been like Edgeworth, it's been. Uh, we technically um, had Godot for the last one of the third game, and the second half. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get someone new for the last one? I don't know. Uh, sorry, Clavier just, Clavier had, like, just died. So. Clavier just had like the sickest guitar solo that made him uh, cough up a cold, so we need a that new prosecutor. doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> well, I was saying cough because... <laughs> yeah. Well, we will now uh, <coughs> begin the uh, trial of the, 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 uh, Vermission. Is the judge okay? His voice is all raspy and he's looking around a little nervous-like. Uh, <coughs> uh, the, the repercussions of today's trial will most likely be felt for a long time, and may indeed alter our legal system forever. Today is a test of the jurist system, and the first step toward a new order in our courts. Daddy's secret mission! The jurists will function like a jury. It is hoped their inclusion will help the courts be oh, to better reflect the people. Maybe will. the jurists will all be weirdos. Where it's like, here's our jurists for today, folks. It's like on Jeopardy, where they're like, tell us about uh, how many cats you own. It's like, well, I own five cats. It's like, well, I own seven cats. Okay, I to be fair, no they, cats. The the people, the contestants on Jeopardy decide ahead of time what they're going to talk about. What yeah. Alex is going to ask so, them about. So, so Drew, I hear that you uh, really are into. Forgery. Scientology, and you're like, you know what? You know what, Alex? It's right, it's true. I've been doing all this. Hey, Prunella, you like reading, right? Treat you my library card for half that piece, piece of cake. Of cake. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
Here are today's jurists. A computer scientist over <laughs> from Oklahoma City. John Smith. Everybody's favorite. And Lando Calrissian. <laughs> He's just hanging out. We have more than two jurists, right? We yeah. Have, we have four. We have six? Six? Five or six. <gasps> Maybe they'll like interrupt and be obnoxious. It is hoped their inclusion will help the courts to better reflect the people's will. Please just be all of the previous prosecutors. All of them. Even the ones who are <laughs> dead. Or, Karma. 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 I Thanks. need to my, be my spot. <laughs> spot. <laughs> Why aren't there any jurists in the courtroom? Three closed circuit cameras watch this courtroom at all times. The jurists have access to everything that transpires. Oh, come on. I want to see them. Jurists, judge well and judge cool. Now see here, Prosecutor Gavin. Uh, I was going to say that. Ah, <laughs> uh, my apologies, Air Judge. <clears throat> uh, jurists, today, er, uh, today, uh, judge today's trial coolly, if you would be so kind. <laughs> the jurists are unbound by the letter of the law. They don't affect the trial with evidence, but by their feelings. And we're about to find out just what effect they're going to have. Oh my god. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. The details of the case, if you would. The victim is the painter Drew Misham. He was killed in his own studio. <laughs> yeah. His coffee was poisoned. By whom, you ask? By none other than the defendant, Vera Misham. There wasn't any poison in the coffee! Achtun! Somebody has been doing their homework. Indeed, poison was not present in the coffee, but on the mug itself. The mug? Ah, residue was found on the rim, I see. The autopsy report describes the manner of our victim's death. The court accepts this as evidence. Mishim's autopsy report added to the court record. Blunt trauma to the head. <laughs> Blunt trauma to head. <laughs> Alright, death by atroquinine poisoning. Yeah. Estimated time of death, 9 to 9.30 p.m. It's around there. Drew Mishim, 52, male. Oh, yep. he's young-ish. Young for this day, he needs to be dead. <laughs> young to have that gray hair. Mm -hmm. According to this report, the victim's death was caused by atroquinine poisoning. A chemical compound that does not occur naturally. Lethal dosage is a mere 0 0.002 milligrams. A touch of atroquinine in the body is the touch of the Reaper's scythe. Wow, okay. Very well, Prosecutor Gavin. Uh, you may present your witness. I have for you today a simple man for a simple case. What? A man who witnessed the murder in its entirety. Oh, no. That journalist, no doubt. The witness will state his name and occupation. Ah, right. Uh, well, for starters, my name's Spark Brushel. My job is a lone observer of the world. In other words, a freelance journalist, right? <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd like to state something here for the record. Uh, yes, Mr. Brushel? I dislike conclusions, specifically the jumping to aspect of conclusions. Uh, preconceptions make park sandbox of endless desert waste, end quote. But you are a journalist! You said so yourself yesterday! Well, that's true, yes. But you must understand, I stand before you today a man with a dream. I'm offering you my testimony in exchange for exclusive rights to the story. Scoop turns Mr. Brushel into that Mr. Brushel, end quote. Uh, is this the right voice to give him? It's fine. You know what? <laughs> you don't care at I all. I don't even care. I wish this was the guy that got killed off. Wow, Marty! <laughs> okay, the other guy looks more like, I don't know, an Einstein. He could be cool. This dude looks like every... <laughs> Every he looks like someone who used to go to our old church as an adult. <laughs> you probably don't remember. Oh, I was about to say, <laughs> who? <laughs> he looks like every, like, terrible dentist or every... <laughs> Spark Brushel, dentist, have you been flossing twice a day? <laughs> no, I could tell because your gums are bleeding because I'm jamming the floss uh, into your gums really or, hard. <laughs> or there was the gal who checked my teeth and she was like, See, your gums are bleeding. See, I'm like, that's because you're poking my gums with your little, like poker poker thing <laughs> like she wasn't even poking the teeth she was poking my gums directly she's like see they bleed they bleed <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah if you cut your skin it bleeds that doesn't mean you don't so floss it so bad oh my god that's why i hate the one of the reasons i hate the dentist i hate the dentist let's hear your testimony then shall we a simple case a eh, gavin for me the jury is still out yeah okay the journalist story well we're diving right into the witness you really need to like go tan sir just just your chin he's tanner than i oh just your again, chin again marty that's just like the five o'clock shadow it's because he shaves there a lot i visited the studio around nine o'clock that night to do the interview the first outsider to enter the atelier 
uh, journalistic history made, end quote. I don't know if that's how you say that word. What if, okay, this is a really weird theory. What if this journalist, because you said he has five o'clock shadow, what if he's that guy, shaved all of his hair, and then he bought, like, the weird, like, oh, fake hair for the top of your head, and then he, like, faked his own death? Or killed somebody else, killed, killed the real journalist. Because nobody knows who he is. Okay, that is a know. weird theory. I don't but all know. Right. He has all this five o'clock shadow. Why would you randomly decide? Oh, I guess now's the time to be shaving. Why? Like, if you Maybe have he just facial... uses makeup and is weird about it. Okay. Maybe he's got a genetic illness. I don't know. Okay. Well. But just get over but, it. Like, I don't know. Cover it up. You're in. Court. How? You're in court. In number <laughs> four. Like, Hi, four. my name is Otis. <laughs> Wearing the hockey mask. Wow. <laughs> His daughter brought us coffee right after we started. Uh, and you know what happened next. Star falls, end quote. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Well, I guess that's probably where the hmm. thing is. That does sound like a simple case. His eyes bugged out! Unless you were the one who poisoned him. Whoa, 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 what are you saying? Judge! Um, <laughs> uh, need I remind you the cameras are rolling today? I felt the need to be a bit dramatic. They're <laughs> always rolling. <laughs> You didn't do it, did you? Me don't feel like that. Uh, come on, that's like newsmaker making the news. End quote. Or even contemporary witch hunt. End quote. <laughs> I know wild accusations rock courtroom. End quote. <laughs> rock indeed. Prosecutor Gavin sure looks looks like he's having fun. I'm so happy for him. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Justice, your cross-examination, oh, please. Oh, I know what we need to press and be like, feelings! Boom! The journalist's story. Are you talking about the bracelet? No, I'm talking I'm talking about his... his I object. Final... That makes me feel oh. bad. <laughs> the jury. No, oh. they, were just, they were just saying, like, oh, things will be judged not by evidence, but by feelings. Oh, oh, also, one really <laughs> stupid thing that we're not probably not going to get to see. If you have a game over here, the judges still want to declare his them guilty, even though it's a jury. Oh. <laughs> they just didn't program that in, basically. Oh, they're like, you're dumb. So it's not like, jury deliberate. The jury finds them guilty. <laughs> How the, does the jury need to like call the judge and be like, beep boop beep boop brrr? <laughs> Is this talk about? Oh, it's the jury. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> judge, if we don't hear from you by one o'clock on a court day, we get concerned. We get concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I visited the studio around nine o'clock that night. Nine o'clock at night? Isn't that a little late for an interview? So late. If the great painter Drew Mission says come at nine o'clock, believe you me, I go at nine o'clock. Then, the first, as it turned out, last interview of such a prolific painter. Right, can you tell us what it was like when you arrived? The first outsider to enter the atelier. I don't know how to say that. Atelier? Atelier? You, I thought atelier. it was like a French word or atelier. something. Atelier. Atelier? I oh. think. I think atelier. I was like, oh, it's probably French. Atelier. Because you don't pronounce... Er, atelier. I don't know French. You were the first reporter ever in Drew's studio? Pro positivity will look back that night as a turning point in journalistic history. Uh, a basically insignificant step for all mankind, but a giant step for that brushel guy. End quote. <laughs> that, I would read that. <laughs> if no one on the outside ever had access to the studio, then it would serve to reason that the deed was done by an insider. Well, it's one of those By two which people. he means Vera did it. So, how did this epoch-making interview go? Otherwise, it's like, well, bam, somebody catapults through the window. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like... And then Granny jumped out of the closet! closet. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna get anything done. We're already at the 15 minute mark, almost! We've barely done anything! We're the worst. Would you mind being a little more specific? Ooh, let me tell you, I enjoy a cuppa. In fact, it all began when I was in third grade. No, wait, fourth grade. That's not what I meant! <laughs> I believe I know what Air Forehead is driving at. This coffee that the victim was served. Did anyone other than the defendant touch it? R right, that! That's what I was going to say, really. Well, now, if you got a question to ask, you'd better straight up ask it. That's what I tell all the new recruits. Several times, if necessary. You're a freelance! <laughs> right for a grade schooler. That's my motto. Which is to say, I can only write grade school level stuff, I just mean, WHO TOUCHED THE COFFEE?! <laughs> Dunno. I was in the back looking at the studio's equipment when she served it. 
And what happened next? Wow, well, okay. And you know what happened next? Starfall, end quote. Uh huh. I'm like giving him a lisp sometimes, but not all the time. <laughs> That's how. Uh, it could, if... That could happen. I had, did. we ever meet anybody with a lisp? There's one dude in my theater group. I've who met. Had it. I had a professor who had the biggest lisp I've ever heard. What What was he teaching? Physics. Um. He was a brilliant guy, and he was very nice. Yeah. You just could not understand, understand him. a word he was saying. That it sounds felt, kind felt really... of terrible. It, like to the point where I'm like, is this guy like? mentally handicapped in some way then I'm like nope he's brilliant he's, he's not brilliant. but he just he has a speech impediment which made wow. me feel really bad what's this about a star falling star falls huh it's like an old telegram send money over Vowie, you don't know that's like a journalism code word an important personage path of the way a star fall uh get it but there's no gravity in space is there I wouldn't think stars could fall really does this matter oh boy this is good stuff good stuff uh, how about star breaks? Nah, lacks the punch. I know, I know, star dies. Nah, lacks the imagination. Of course, you could go with Drew dies. Straight to the point. I like it. I think we need to hear about something a little more substantial. The moment of death, Brussels coffee, the star's coffee. Uh, maybe about his coffee? Because he, li he likes coffee, don't you know? So, you drank the coffee that Vera served you too? Of course. When someone serves you coffee, you drink it. That's what my old boss always used to say. Never to get what he meant by it, though. But you're still alive, which is to say you didn't die. Of course not! Uh, no point falling before you're a star, end quote. That's not exactly what I was getting at. What were you getting at then? <laughs> you know the poison was on the rim, not in the coffee. Oh yes, yes! Uh, there were two cups on the tray she brought. And one of the cups had Drew's signature painted on the side. Hmm, no chance the guest would take that one by mistake, I guess. Good thing it wasn't like, here's the Charlie Brown mug and here's the Snoopy mug. <laughs> guess which one what is, is yours? Poison? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Justice, was that testimony important? Uh, it might be important later, but now it's not. So Brush will drink the coffee too. Doesn't look like this is going to lead to much. Very well, please continue with the testimony. Press the statement again. No one else or entered the room besides her the whole time. Can you say that for sure? For sure? Sure, I'm sure. Drew's studio isn't a big place, kiddo. <laughs> I'd know it if someone else had come in. What if they had been hiding in there from before? Like in the closet? Even if someone had been hiding in the studio, <laughs> they hardly could have poisoned that mug without anyone noticing. You think I, Spark Brushel, would miss something as obvious as that? No way. He sure makes it sound exciting. I guess that's his job. <laughs> I am not giving this exciting. Oh man, that was great. Let me tell you about this. It sure sounds exciting. <laughs> not really. There's only one moment we need to focus on, really. The moment when Drew Misham died? Exactly. There has to be something there. Okay. I wish Emma was the- Oh, that's important? We're talking about the coffee the witness drank. I'd say it's important. Very well, please add that to your testimony, Mr. Brushel. Fine. I mean, we might as well try. I drink the coffee too, but I'm not dead yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're sure you drank the coffee? Oh, yes, yes, quite. I gulped it down, felt that sweet scorch in my throat. But you say the victim took one sip and fell over? And you still kept drinking? Corp! <laughs> what? <laughs> drink your coffee when it's hot, never when it's not. That's what my old boss used to say. Never really knew what he meant by okay, it. Okay, for a sec, I thought this was gonna be... Okay, do you remember that weird, like, word problem where it's like, Susie drink, drinks, like, an iced tea and she dies, and her friend, like, Anna, drinks four iced teas and she doesn't die. Like, what? Where's the poison? And they're like, oh, the What? Po have you never heard of this? Wait, and then it's like, oh, the poison's in the ice cubes. And she drank, she waited so long to drink her drink that that's why she's dead, and then Anna's not dead because she drank her iced tea so fast. I don't remember where I learned this! This sounds like the, a Professor Layton puzzle. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember where I saw this, but it was something really weird like that. When did I learn that? Oh my gosh. Anyway, for a sec I thought it was going to be like that, but it's not iced tea. It's hot. It's hot. Stop blinking using your lower eyelids, dude. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, should I get him to talk about something else? Yes. <laughs> yes. 
moment of death, probably. How about the moment of death since you were just drinking a coffee? Um, about when Mr. Mission passed away. Oh boy, what a thing that was. He puts his coffee mug down with a crash, right? Hmm. Yes, and then... Then the cold finger of death touches his spine. Life's flame fl sputters and fails. It's <laughs> so cold with that touch that he could do not but tremble uncontrollably. Actually, life's flame is a little tired. Life's river froze over. Yes, that's a go! <laughs> uh, I think he's starting his article already. Could you describe that a little more simply? Well, as you can imagine, I was pretty surprised. He hit the floor, as they say. Artist seizure is final performance, end quote. I feel like the lisp is a bit much. Okay. Uh, just, just, I'll toss it, just toss it in there occasionally when it's funny. Okay. <laughs> Atroconine paralyzes the central nervous system. The body arches back like a bow, the limbs tremble, the throat burns. Th that's quite enough of that! Some of us want to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I want details. Lots of juicy details. For that, you can listen to our last year's hit single, Atroconine, My Love by the Gaviniers. Available at all major music outlets. <laughs> Hear that, <What>? jury? <laughs> the point here is that the victim died of atroconine poisoning. Well, Mr. Justice, how did you find that testimony? It's so important. Well, as an account of the moment of the victim's death, I'd say it's very important. Please add it to the testimony. Very well. The court requests the witness add this account to his testimony. Well, the jurists aren't doing anything. <laughs> Those spasms. That was definitely death by poison. Yeah, I feel like that's better. Yeah, than okay. Without the lisp. You say it was definitely death by poison? How can you be so sure? Hey, look, I'm a journalist. I've seen a lot of things. <laughs> and I've had more than my share of experiences with so-called poisonings. But now he just sounds normal. Hmm. Man eats fishy fish. Goes bye-bye. End quote. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> For a second, he sounded like Gumshoe. I'm like, no. <laughs> hey, pal, listen up. <laughs> Gumshoe here. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Food poisoning doesn't count. Hmm, should I get him to talk about something else? Always. You say Mr. Misham had the coffee, too. But did you actually see him drink the coffee? Of course. He who sees it wins, but he who says it wins bigger. End quote. I live in a man sees dog eat dog and writes about it world. Yet. Yet? I guess I can't say I saw him drink it, really. I was on he the had, other he side. He had of... one so-called sip, if that. Man puts lips lips to mug drinks, end quote. Hmm. Oh, so literally he's just like... <laughs> 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 oh, that poison is quite virulent, I hear. My stomach did a so-called somersault. Since I'd gulped down that coffee without so much as a second glance at it. Wait, maybe something's there. Some kind of so-called trick. Anyone wants to venture to- wants to venture a guess? Uh, for the record. <laughs> Does this guy have a pause button? Well, Mr. Justice, did you find that testimony valuable? Everything's important! The victim drank his coffee, then immediately fell over. Oh, yes, yes. You can go to the press with that one. Your Honor, this is a vital piece of information. Please add it to the testimony. Maybe- okay, this is a good idea. Maybe if this dude panics, you add the lisp. <laughs> like, well, well, he, what are you doing? I, I don't know what you're like, talking like, about. Like, maybe, like, he had, like, speech therapy, so he's better, but then whenever he gets nervous, he's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. That could be like, it. We'll see. Be uh, very well, the witness will add this to his testimony. Vital. Right. He had one sip, if that. The next moment, he was on the floor. Okay. So he either took a sip, or he didn't, and then he fell over? Oh, yes. Indubitably. Just like that. Wham, bam. So Mr. Misham drank the coffee and fell over immediately. Hmm, I think Brushel's telling the truth, too. Hmm, should I get him to talk about something else? No need. There's no real need to change the testimony. The problem with the testimony is already pretty obvious. No one else entered the room besides her the whole time. Everybody dance now. Boom, 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 What are we supposed to present? Well, do you think anything's pro problematic with that statement? Oh, well, maybe the... On the floor. I thought maybe that would make sense. He had one sip, if that. Well, it was on the... It was on the coffee mug, so that's fine. Is it because the poison's inside the... Frame? It, well, it was on the rim. Sure. It was on the rim. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's the other mug? That's the only mug that we have as, as evidence. He just took his coffee mug and left. 
<laughs> that wasn't even yours! <laughs> I always wanted a coffee cup. End quote. Oh, <laughs> uh, back. <laughs> Vera's card. The letter, the portrait, the landscape, the autopsy report, maybe? Autopsy. Autopsy report. Autopsy. Uh, it doesn't say that he fell on the ground. Is the problem with the sip? It's these coffee. Just present the coffee mug. Objection! Okay, thank you. It'll be explained. You know what I have a problem with? A particular property of the poison used, atroquinine. Oh, Prosecutor Gavin was quite clear about the poison. A lethal dosage of 0 .002 milligrams paralyzes the central nervous system. If you drank that, even you, Mr. Justice, would be reduced to a quivering pile. Why are you using me as an example? <laughs> Unfortunately, we weren't told everything. There was a vital omission in Prosecutor Gavin's information. An omission? Atroquinine is as virulent as he says, but death doesn't come upon ingestion, not immediately. That's because Atroquinine is slow acting. Oh, I forgot. Slow it's acting? Well. What, 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 what? According to one forensic scientist, it's one of those. It's one of the most virulent. 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 It's one of the most virulent poisons, but it's absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for the adverse effects to show. See, it's been a week. Okay, right. I forgot. If we are supposed, if we suppose that the moment Mr. Misham sipped the coffee was when he sealed his fate, then he would have still had time to left to enjoy his last cup of Joe. Whoa, that dude's skinny. Yep. Order, order. What's the meaning of this? If what the defense says is correct, why, that contradicts the entire testimony we've just heard. Well, Mr. Brushel, anything to say on the record? Slow acting. S-L-O-W-A-C-T. It was virulent, all right. Even then, he had already begun digging its claws into the journalist. He's working on his scoop. <sighs> It's Brushel, ya. Yeah. Air Brushel, let's take a trip back down memory lane. Huh? Did the victim really die the instant he took a sip? Think it over. This is vital. You know what I think? I think that was a not so subliminal suggestion. End quote. I admit it does cause a problem if he died when you say he died. I would be forced to say, Ah, we vid his end to my simple case. And then you would be forced to say farewell to your article. Come again? You can't write a story based on conjecture, can you? And as the case drags on, other reporters will pick up the scent. And you'll be forced to kiss your exclusive scoop goodbye. A lot of hearts in the audience, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, always. Uh, scoop? Scoop. A lot of hearts, she's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he looks like a clown when he opens... His mouth. He's brushing oh, his I ton know. and his eyeball. No, his glass frame. His glasses frames. Still okay, not a lot I know better. what he looks like when he opens his mouth. Remember in Pac-Man World Rally when you play the watermelon cup and you play the clown chorus <laughs> with his mouth open? <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> Cook the eye frame to go to our Pac-Man World Rally one off but I don't put no, in the eye no, cards. No, you never do. <laughs> Look, wait. Just wait a second. Just one second. We're waiting, we're waiting, out with it. I, j I think I just recall the so-called important detail. A revival else. of recollection, end quote. A story survival, end quote. Attorney utterly confused, end quote. Actually, I did notice something when I visited the studio. I'd heard of poison that takes its sweet time, see? But not what I've been saying for the last few minutes, apparently. Mr. Brusho, are you saying you noticed something that explains what happened? You bet I am. The antidote for a poisonous contradiction, end quote, you might say. Or, I still have no idea what you're talking about, end quote, I might say. I figured it out, but only after an in-depth interview. See, thanks to my journalism skills, I know who poisoned that coffee. Everyone's like, whoa! It was me. It was totally me. <laughs> order, order, order. As far as I can tell, the witness is standing by his testimony. That Mr. Misham died the instant after he drank. Of course I'm standing by my testimony, and my dream of exclusive rights to this story. Ah, I suppose it was too much to hope for. What was? Of course he wouldn't choose a simple case, not him. Him? Phoenix Wright, who else? Achtun Airbrushel, report for us if you would. What is it that you noticed? 
This court is a critical trial of the jurist system. I'm afraid no room for doubt is permissible. You will testify to the court about what you noticed. I swear, if this guy has a mental breakdown and turns insane, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> he already looks kind of creepy. I know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> He'll look even more creepy. <laughs> when I arrived at the studio, Mr. Mission was at his desk. Cool. He seemed to be writing a letter, but he quickly sealed the envelope. What? I thought nothing of it at the time, of course. Now that I think about it, what if he was writing a suicide note? Wow! Okay. Hmm, a suicide note? Yes, he had this look on his face. Man's face inscrutable as a quadratic equation, end quote. Suicide? Poor Mr. Misham. But that means Vera's innocent. Would someone commit suicide in the middle of an interview? Oh. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. He wanted to go out with a bang. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did that because I wanted my show to go out with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> what Brushel noticed? Well, we're gonna have to cross-examine what Brushel noticed next time. Oh my gosh, we I'd did apologize nothing. <laughs> we got through one testimony. <laughs> we got through one testimony. <laughs> and then we talked about nothing for the rest of it. I don't even remember what we talked about. <laughs> we were talking about Susie and Anne if they. Oh yeah. Steve. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> and we were talking about um. <laughs> Fingernail polish, uh, woodland mushrooms. <laughs> See, we didn't th talk about that. This is this is why our videos go on for so long because it's like I get started, we get started talking, then we're like, oh, remember this obscure yeah, reference this obscure that nobody reference. will ever get? Oh, remember this obscure reference nobody will ever get? Oh yeah, let's totally talk well, let's about talk that. Let's talk about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time for more Spark Brushel testimony. Until we meet again, my friends. Have a great day and God bless. Bless you if you've been watching for this long. I know.